When we hear the term refugee camp, we often think of destruction, misery, and just overall bad vibes. But this Tibetan camp in Pokhara, Nepal, has a different story. I want to introduce you to a refugee camp that's got a special place in my heart. It is a place of resilience, community, and incredible spirit. First, before we go any further, you might be asking yourself, what's the deal with this Tibet? Is it a country man or a state of mind? That's a very good question. Thank you for asking, sir. Tibet is actually a region in the Himalayas, located in Central Asia. It has a rich history and culture that has been heavily influenced by Buddhism. For many years, it was an independent country. But in the 1950s, China annexed Tibet and has been imposing its rule over the region ever since. We're currently in one of the oldest Tibetan refugee camps. This is the first camp in Kokura. This camp was established in the 60s mm -hmm. when many of the Tibetans left Tibet due to China conflicts <laughs> with China. Many of them went to India, but some of them ended up in Nepal. And this is one of these refugee camps. As a Palestinian, I feel a connection to the people of Tibet. So when I heard that there are Tibetan refugees in Nepal, I had to learn more about their story. So this place is called Tashiling Tibetan Refugee Settlement Village. So we came here as a refugee in 1959. When China invaded Tibet, we came here as an exile. So we have been living here for almost 60 years now. So you're Tibetan? Of course I'm Tibetan. In our own Nepal, it should be nearly 20,000. 20,000 all around Nepal? Not only in Nepal, but mm. in more in India with 100,000. So we're like the first generation, like we came here. And right now we have around like nearly 400 people living around here, 400 approximately. The people here were so welcoming and I never felt like an outsider. That's our guest house. We have the guest house. For who? For the tourists, like the backpackers. If they want to know about our cultures, they can have a guest house over here and one on the top over there. We have a small clinic for the Tibetan refugees. We have a small clinic. And this is our car. It's a carpet show where we sell the Tibetan carpets. So when our Tibetan uh, refugees, when they first came here, we weave the Tibetan carpet. It's made of sheep's wool. We weave and we sell it. So whatever we sell, the, the profit, it goes to the community. So this is our community hall, where we have a functions, we have a weddings, really? celebrations. Are you married? Yeah, I'm married. Did you have your celebration here? Yeah, of course I did had. Wow. On 13 March, I had my wedding here. It was heartwarming to see how close-knit this community was, despite the difficulties they face. I was born here, mm -hmm. but my parents, they're born in Tibet. Have you ever been to Tibet? No, I have never been. Do you, my, think, my, my do parents, you wish to? Yeah, of course I want to go back, you know, but it's it's challenging, you know, like we don't have, we need a passport for visa to go to Tibet. Even we're Tibetan, but we don't have a passport, so it's illegal to go to in Tibet. Wow. These words echo the painful reality faced by many Tibetan refugees today. Now, let's take a step back and understand how these challenges came to be. It all traces back to the events of the 1950s in Tibet. Back in 1950, China decided to take control of Tibet. So they started interfering with Tibetan culture, religion and freedom. So in 1956, the people of Tibet rebelled against the Chinese rule. To say the least, China did not respond nicely. They brutally suppressed the uprising, leading to the death of thousands of Tibetans. Fast forward to 1959, and the 14th Dalai Lama, who was basically the head of Tibet, found out that China was planning to assassinate him. So he decided to flee and seek safety in India. China did not take kindly to losing their influential figure. They unleashed a harsh crackdown on the Tibetan people. Many were arrested and imprisoned, and many, many others had to leave their homes. 
And that, my friends, is why we see so many Tibetan refugees today. Of course, this is a very simplified explanation, so please do your own research. Do you remember in 1962 yeah. when you left? Yeah. How was it like? Too deep people. No motor, no taxi, only walking. Two, three miles walking. I was around 13 years old. So you remember walking yeah, for so many days? Yeah, I remember everything. We have the trouble too much. We have no eat, no drink, no wedding, nothing. So right now, we are like me. I am stay here to make a little bit prayer to the God and just wait for my country. Do you hope to go back to Tibet one day? Yeah, yeah. Not my generation, next generation, not the next generation, uh, other generation. And we have to uh, just wait for generation. Well, people will go back. Now, we are heading to one of the first monasteries built outside of Tibet. The secret behind the peace and resilience I witnessed lies in these monasteries. So I went to see it for myself. Welcome to Janshup Shaoling Monastery. It's not just a place of worship. It's also a place of gathering and education. Imagine it as a boarding school where Tibetan children come here to learn their language, religion and culture. Not only that, they also study mathematics, science, philosophy and many other subjects. Here, they openly practice their religion and keep the Tibetan traditions alive. Every day at 3 p.m. they gather here for a special prayer ceremony. So, I decided to join them and experience this unique Tibetan tradition myself. This special support system keeps the Tibetan identity alive, creating strong, responsible adults who are not only aware of their past, but they're also proud of their presence. Behind the chants and the warm smiles lies a history of struggle and displacement. Tibetans have faced immense challenges, from losing their homeland to suppressing their culture, yet in the middle of all of this, they came together as a community, preserving their identity for future generations. And as I say goodbye, I will carry their story in my heart, and I hope you carry it in yours. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this story. If you would like to see more, please support me by liking and sharing this video.